Why the Japanese toilet is the most considered item in the world. Now, I didn't want to write this essay, but I was compelled to. Buy a toilet, a Japanese toilet. I'm not referring to the features nor the technical doodads of the toilet. I'm referring more to the consideration, the thought that is not only behind, but the thought that is on the behind of every feature and every doodad. Now, you might be thinking, oh, look, honey, it's another non Japanese person who's obviously just returned from holiday there and wants to tell the world about this new thing he thinks no one knows about, but actually the whole world already knows about. Not quite. My personal experience. 20 years ago, I moved to Japan and lived there for a number of years. In Tokyo, to be precise. During the day, I taught English to Japanese people, which involved teaching conversational English to adults and yelling the word carrot repeatedly to a class of five year olds. And to all my students who were walking around foreign countries whilst on holiday, saying things like, I love muesli. I love cheese, and referring to rain with, oh look, it's pissing down. I'm so sorry. I was young and foolish, and I thought it was funny, but obviously it, it, well, it is quite funny actually. So that's what I did during the day, whilst at night I DJed at various nightclubs and events around Tokyo. At the time, I shared an apartment with two other foreigners, a stock standard Japanese apartment. Now, skip over to Australia. At that time, Australia was going through a long and very severe drought. There were water restrictions put in place, people weren't allowed to wash their cars, we were encouraged to have shorter showers, and the thoughts of water saving innovations were the top of mind for many, many people. So, naturally, the first thing I noticed about my Japanese apartment. Was the toilet. It was one of the older ones, which didn't have the technical doodads and the push buttons and things like that, but it did have the faucet and the basin built into the top of the cistern. So when you flush, the water flows through the faucet, allowing you to wash your hands. Then the soapy water would flow from the basin into the cistern, saving you from using additional water to wash your hands whilst depositing soapy, fragrant water in your cistern, ready for the The next flush. The soapy water was better at cleaning the bowl whilst helping with the deodorization. And the fact that you washed your hands and dried them prior to manhandling the toilet door handle added to the hygiene benefits. I thought this was brilliant. But then, questions. Why wasn't this a feature of every toilet, especially in my home country? I can't be the first Aussie to have seen this. Or can I? Why does Japan even have this? They have no water shortage problems at all. They get a lot of rain, actually. Is it a cultural thing? At that time, I was still young and clueless about Japanese culture. I didn't know a damn thing about Japan. So, why did I go there? Well, my best friend moved there a couple of years earlier and told me it was heaps of fun. I like fun, so I went knowing little to nothing about Japan. I learned very quickly how to order food. As long as the menu had a picture of the dish, I would point to it and say, Kore? I learned how to go to an izakaya and order a 90 minute nomi hodai and the tabe hodai deal, which is the all you can drink and the all you can eat deals. I learned the difference between salt and sugar after learning the hard way. That, by the way, was the worst coffee I ever made. And I learned very quickly the difference between peach flavored pudding and crab flavored tofu. <laughs> I thought I had suppressed that memory forever, but here we are. So, as you can deduce, my priorities in life were vastly different to what they are now and not at all conducive to starting a business using information arbitrage. I just wanted to DJ, make music, and party. Come to think of it, I still want to do that. However, Over time, I learned a lot more about Japanese culture. One of the things that stood out to me was the spirit of motainai, which translates to what a waste. Motainai was embedded into the culture of a country which is 22 times smaller than Australia, but has five times the population and very little in the way of natural resources. 
I understood how this mindset can lead to putting consideration at the forefront of Japanese products and product development roadmaps. Consider this. Those who have been to Japan will have noted the absence of public rubbish bins, and yet the streets are mostly free from rubbish. I'm not going to go too deep into the behavioral science behind this, but basically we're herd animals. If the streets were full of rubbish, you would think it's okay to also throw your rubbish on the street because other people have done it before you. I'm not saying it's right to do that. I'm saying, and there's plenty of studies on this, that this is what is most likely to happen. However, if no one is littering and the streets are clean, you are less likely to be the first one to litter because you will likely be the only one and attract the wrong kind of attention. Now, I'm not saying Japanese people don't litter. There's a certain time and place for that, like a street festival. But on the whole, cleanup activities are pretty much embedded into them since school age because they got to clean their school and their classroom. There's a lot more to this, but I want you to focus on what happens to the behavior of a person from outside of this cultural norm. Well, what happens is they conform. An example of conforming in Japan, of course, is carrying your rubbish with you until you find a bin to dispose of it, most likely in your own home or a train station or a convenience store. Brief side note, there are tons of convenience stores in Tokyo, and when I was living there, every convenience store had three rubbish bins outside right next to the main entrance. Everyone knew this and just threw their rubbish there. However, with the increasing popularity of Japan as a holiday destination, from get this, 6.7 million tourists in 2005 to almost 32 million in 2019. That's a five-fold increase. You can imagine these bins started to get so full so quickly that convenience stores were not able to keep up with the disposal. So naturally, they've now not only placed the bins inside the stores, they have made them smaller too. In addition, most train stations only have a minimal number of bins, if any at all. An example of consideration. So with this motainai mindset in mind, I wanted to show you some chewing gum I bought from Japan recently. I opened it up and was kind of perplexed to find a mini sticky note pad in there. The first thing I thought was, what is this? Sticky notes for ants? But then I read the writing on the gum container and quickly realized, I don't know how to read Japanese. So I asked my wife, who does know how to read Japanese, and she told me that these are papers you can use to wrap your chewed gum with so it's easier to store in your pocket when you're done and it won't get stuck anywhere, even when you're throwing it in the bin. You see what I mean when I say considered? Right, so let's get back to, and our backsides to, what is probably the most considered item in the world, the modern Japanese toilet. Sometimes referred to as the washlet toilet, sometimes and incorrectly referred to as a bidet, I'm just going to call it the Japanese toilet. But first I want to introduce you to my theory of sexiness and innovation. The levels of innovation on this contraption, on this Japanese toilet, is unusual for an unsexy item. You see, I have this hypothesis that the level of innovation and attention to development is exponentially related to how sexy it is. Refer to my science-o-matic graph. As you can see, as it gets sexier, there's more innovation. And now let's look at another hypothesis called the Lone Geek Scenario, or LGS. Now, there's only one caveat to my hypothesis of sexiness and innovation, and that has to do with the Lone Geek Scenario, or LGS. This LGS posits that whenever there is a lone geek who makes it their life mission to pursue the product development of an unsexy item, then the item in question behaves the same way as a sexy item where the level of obsession by the lone geek has an exponential relationship to the level of innovation. To put it plainly, toilets are unsexy. Not even the ageless beauty of Naomi Campbell could make them sexy. Trust me, she tried and failed hard. Maybe because it wasn't a Japanese toilet. And this is not her only toilet pick, by the way. The lone geek in the toilet game is the Japanese company called Toto. They're not a band, they have nothing to do with the rains over Africa, and I'm sorry if that's in your head now. But before we jump into the features and doodads of the Japanese toilet, we need to learn about why it was invented in the first place. It was a bidet seat aimed at hospital patients and older adults with mobility issues, which prevented them from properly cleaning themselves after toileting, which I just learned is an actual word for this activity. Once again, consideration makes an appearance. 
Now let's look at Toto. Toto worked its collective buttocks off to develop a reliable and life-improving product. They even had 300 of their employees be the test subjects when they were trying to figure out what angle they should be squirting the water out of the wand to hit the target area. Let's take a look at some of their improvements. So in 1983, they invented the automatic self-cleaning wand before and after each use. 1988 saw the wand positioning, wireless remote control, and the soft-closed lid and the soft-closed seat. 1992 saw the ozone deodorizer, pulsating water massage, oscillating water massage. 1993, one-touch lid removal for easy cleaning. 1995, one-touch washlet main unit removal for easy cleaning. 1997, automatic O2 deodorizer from a seated position. 1999 saw Wonder Wave technology, which increases the personal cleansing comfort and reduces the water usage by more than 30%. 2001 saw automatic energy saving. 2003 saw auto open, close and auto flush features come in. 2011 saw the eWater Plus cleaning technology for the wand before and after each use. 2012 saw toilet bowl cleaning technologies pre-mist before each use and eWater Plus after each use. And 2017, air in Wonder Wave water technology, which is air infused water droplets, which further increase personal cleansing comfort and reduce water consumption. So let's play out a scenario. You enter the toilet, the sensor detects you're in there and automatically opens the lid. If you just want to stand and deliver, you can either make the hand gestures or press the button to automatically raise the seat also. If you want to drop some friends off at the pool, then you take a seat. The seat is automatically sanitized. The seat is heated at the temperature that you've set it to. Once you sit, sound starts to play or music or whatever you've set it to. This is to hide any noises you make especially helpful in work or public toilets. A fan is removing any smelly air from the bowl whilst you're seated. You can flush without having to stand up knowing that the whirlpool flushing action is not going to bathe your undersides with excrement water. You can initiate the cleaning wand, which comes out and hits your target cleaning area. You can choose if you only want to clean the target area or if you want a full bath of your undersides. You can adjust the water pressure of the cleaning wand. You can adjust the temperature of the water coming out of the cleaning wand. Once you're done, you can initiate the air dryer. Once dry, you can clothe yourself, wash your hands and leave. Before you leave, you could turn around to give the Japanese toilet a smile and a wink. It then bows to you by lowering the lid slowly. You both look at the toilet paper and laugh. Now that sounds like a pretty considered experience. But is this the end? Hell no. Vision for the future. This is where I put my product manager hat on and tell you my roadmap if the Japanese toilet was something I was in charge of. Quick side note, I am a product manager. This is what I do for a living. As you enter, the sensor can identify you and engage your last used settings. Or if you had your phone with you, then it knows via your toileting app. It knows what settings you prefer and adjusts itself regardless if this was your home, your friend's house, or a public toilet. There are sensors in the bowl that can detect the health of your gut microbiome and tell you what you're lacking or if you're dehydrated and you should drink more water today. It can tell you that you've actually caught the flu or some other virus but are still asymptomatic and inform you via the app. An AI assistant can suggest certain dietary and lifestyle changes just to bring you back to a balanced state of gastrointestinal health. AI is required because each person's gut microbiome is unique like a fingerprint, so no two people will have the same recommendations. AI is required to learn from your personalized unique data set to recommend what's best specifically for you. On a more macro level, this information can be vital to tracking the health of the populace of an area or a demographic or a city or a nation state, etc. and lead to the development and promotion of foods that are beneficial to people's overall health along with identifying the causes and initial breakout areas of common maladies, viruses, bacterial pathogens, etc. Proper pooping position. PPP. It's not all roses and gumdrops, unfortunately. There is a major flaw in the Japanese toilet design in that it's still a Western-style toilet. And Western-style toilets are not conducive to proper pooping position. PPP is only achieved in the natural squatting position. 
In the squat position, your puborectalis muscle, which is the muscle most important for maintaining fecal continence, also known as not shitting your pants, is disengaged. But when you're seated regularly on a western toilet, the puborectalis muscle acts as a kind of noose around your colon, preventing you from emptying properly. Not being in the PPP also means you're not naturally exerting pressure on your bowels to empty, but rather pushing and sometimes straining so that you can empty. This can lead to many bowel issues of which the most common is hemorrhoids. There are of course many simple solutions already on the market for this, such as step stools, products like the squatty potty, etc. However, it would be an absolute game changer if the step was actually built into the toilet itself so you're not having to keep extra paraphernalia in what is already the smallest room in the house. In addition to having the step built into the toilet, I would have it adjustable so that it can be raised and lowered and inclined based on your height, the length of your legs and where your pivot points are so that it can simulate specifically for you the ideal angle to promote the maximum emptying with the minimal exertion. This can be done manually or settings suggested automatically via your toileting app. So that's it. These are my thoughts on the Japanese toilet being the most considered item in the world. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And please, as always, if you like this, uh, share and subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. And happy considered toileting.